This is a nice spot. And yeah, over the last place, a pretty big upgrade. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah, you came to the backyard and made the century. Uh -huh. I wish I had a gym like this. You have any plans to do a full power beam or anything anytime soon, or just mainly hone in on that deadlift? I don't know if I ever really hone in on anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> I like when I don't get hurt, I do well, and then I, you know, get hurt from time to time, and then like everything goes out the window. Right. Um, mostly, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of squat training just because I've been hurt so many times. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, um, I have a pretty good grasp on what I do nowadays, but I didn't always. You know what right. I mean? So I, I got all those. Um, just trained like a fucking maniac. Yeah, pretty much. I originally got the name Baby Slayer uh, from a username on bodybuilding.com. Um, I used to be a, a bit of a forum fanatic for bodybuilding and powerlifting and stuff like that. But the, uh, the username originally came from um, kind of a situation with my little brother. I had a little brother that uh, died of cancer when I was around 10 or 11. And um, I was very religious uh, growing up and I uh, you know, believed in God you know, fully, prayed every day, went, went to church every week and stuff like that. And uh, my parents had already lost some children as I was growing up and uh, obviously being a religious family, how, how much bad stuff can really happen to good people, right? Um, so, you know, I talked to my parents about, you know, God's will be done kind of thing and um, figured, you know, just pray a lot, you know, do the best you can, be a good person and he'll be all right. And um, he, he ended up not making it, you know, I mean, it was, and it was tough on my family and stuff. And to some small degree, I always, uh, I always blamed myself when I was growing up because, you know, what if I had just been like a little bit more important or a little bit better, or prayed a little bit harder, or just uh, been a little bit more after God's own heart kind of thing, right? And, uh, you know, I never really outwardly expressed it because no one's ever gonna blame me for, you know, my little brother dying of cancer, but it never really, uh, it never really goes away, those thoughts that if you did a little bit better, you could have uh, made that difference. And I always use that with my training. Um, I always, I always thought about my little brother when I lifted and stuff, and I, I thought about that situation, and so it just kind of, uh, just kind of came about that it was my username whenever I made an account on Bodybuilding.com. You know, not just my little brother, but a lot of things I've, I've drawn on that you know originally started with him, and uh, I've always used them to help me lift more weights. You know, I'd, I'd think of, you know, if I could get this weight, I could get him back, kind of thing. It always made it seem very insignificant. If I could get this extra rep, if I could do this, it made it seem super insignificant. And um, you know, being from a religious family and stuff like that, you know, you do feel like you almost have someone else on your side, or I did. You know what I mean? Um, growing up when I first started training. And uh, that kind of thing always really helped me a lot with my training. You know, I always felt like you could lift yourself to a higher level with your training and stuff if you have the right intent and emotion behind it. And so I would, I would draw on those, those strong feelings that I had um, with my brother and with some of the other things in my life whenever I needed to lift heavy things. Uh, I, I don't believe in God anymore. Um, as I got older, I, I started to realize more that, uh, you know, the Bible is mostly, you know, your interpretation of it. No one's really completely right about it. You know, there's a lot of ways to look at it. And um, I, I grew up in a very strict religion, and whenever I realized that it didn't necessarily have to be the case, um, I, you know, thought, well, I've, you know, it's 18 years or something doing this, and now I know it's not necessarily the truth, you know, to hell with all of it, really. But, you know, I gotta tell you, man, he, he may very well be real. I, I'm not against believing in him, I'd love to. 
Uh, my life is, is pretty awesome at the moment and I, I can't take credit for it. So it's, it's could be God, right? I, uh, I had it, I had it kind of rough growing up in terms of you know self-esteem and stuff. Right, right around the time that you should be figuring out who you are as a person, where you do figure out who you are, kind of thing. You start to recognize yourself, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, when you become more of a presence in the world. Uh, I had uh, quite a negative opinion, you know. Um, I had done terrible in school. I had uh, done terrible with girls. I'd done terrible with friends. Done terrible in fights. I'd done. You know, terrible at just about everything I'd ever set out to be good at, you know. Um, I didn't really have any accomplishments to my name at all, nothing that I th thought to be proud of. And um, it didn't lead to anything good. I, I also had a lot of people, you know, more or less telling me I suck. You know what I mean? And it's very easy to believe you suck when you already feel that way in the first place. And you have people that, you know, you know relatively well that uh, will tell you the same thing, you know what I mean? And. You know, I, I didn't even really, uh, I didn't come out of it for many years, many years. I, I didn't know that it was up to, to you or me to change our own life, that we could decide for ourselves, you know, what we want to be, how, what we want to look like, who we want to associate with, what we want to do. Uh, it's, it's purely, you know, if you figure out what you want, you can work towards it. You know, I thought it was more along the lines of like, you're born who you are and you, you deal with what you can deal with more or less and, you know, like other people's opinions were mostly what mattered versus your own. And what it really uh, came down to is whenever I realized that my opinion of myself dictated what I could accomplish, I slowly started to change my opinion of myself positively. And um, as I did, other people's opinions changed as well. And um, by the time other people's opinions changed of me, by the time I, I stopped getting as much hate on YouTube and stuff when I was younger and fatter and less known, I. Uh, I found the world pretty positive and stuff, you know, and uh, I, had, I had people being nice to me for once, um, which I didn't get a whole lot of when I was younger, you know. I, uh, I had to be pretty protective of myself because if I seemed weak, you know, people would take advantage of it. And if I tried to seem like I wasn't weak, people could tell that too, <laughs> and they could take advantage of that as well. So um, it, uh, it took a while, you know, to, to really uh, change things for myself. It took a lot of work and a lot of uh, self-realization that I can work towards whatever I want to. And my own standards of success were very low because I never had any. You know what I mean? I, uh, by the time I got a, a girlfriend, I was super proud even though it wasn't, wasn't the best girlfriend for me. You know what I mean? By the time I got a car, I was super proud even though it wasn't the best car. You know, by the time I made money, it wasn't that much money. I was super happy about it. You know what I mean? And, you know, when you have nothing, when you feel like you're nothing and you feel like you have nothing, the smallest things just make you feel incredible and you, you develop a desire for more and more, and as you accomplish more and more in your own eyes, your self-esteem improves, and your self-esteem improves, everything improves, you know? Uh, more confidence, you like yourself better, and you know, when you're confident and you like yourself, you achieve more, you're happier, and it, it builds on itself, it only grows, you know? If you're negative, only more negative shit comes. If you think you suck, you, it really only continues, because you'll act that way. When you like yourself, when you're positive, when you work towards good things, you only get more of it. And whenever I realized that that was the case, rather than just being set in stone, like I'm me and I suck, whenever I realized that I could control it, then my life got better. I, could, I knew I was willing to do things that other people weren't to reach certain goals. And because of that, I knew that even though I had bulked up to almost 400 pounds, I knew I could diet. Because, you know, I know these other people that are lean wouldn't go through or couldn't go through or wouldn't be willing to go through the kind of bulking I did because I hated it. So I sure as shit had to be able to go through their cutting. You know what I mean? I had to be able to do that shit. And, um, you know, it, it was hard for me to cut, but it took a year and a half and I, I learned a lot about myself. You know, I, I learned that I could work really hard, I could work really consistently, I, I could do things that I, you know, wasn't completely sure of myself with, you know, it's, you're not sure you can cut, you're, you're pretty sure, but you've never done it before, I'm 400 pounds and, you know, I've never been lean, I don't know if I can get lean, you know, I've never stuck to a diet consistently, I don't know if I can, I was just pretty sure about it, and once I, once I saw that I could do those things that I deemed as almost impossible at some point, I realized that other things were possible for me too. 
And uh, if other people could do it, that I could as well, if I was just willing to not give up, to keep trying, to keep working towards it. And most importantly, just know what I wanted. You know what I mean? Like so many people don't actually know what they want or they have such a vague idea that they can never get there. I knew what I wanted. And because I knew what I wanted, I could, you know, figure out a plan. And once I had a plan, I could take a step and another step and, you know, eventually you get there. And once you see that you can accomplish things that you weren't so sure of, it really just opens up a whole world of possibilities for you. But, uh, you know, once you have some form of success, you start to realize that there can be more, you know. And I think my success sort of started with, I guess, getting strong and then I guess seeing that I could diet. And then once I dieted and got strong, I was like, well, you know, now I can get a girlfriend in a car and stuff. Because, you know, I have that little bit of extra self-esteem, that little bit of extra get up and go and faith in myself. And um, it kind of just progressed from there. It was, it was kind of slow. But as I realized what I was able to do, um, a great deal of happiness came to me because I didn't need to be anything special to be happy. I just didn't want to be less than everyone else. You know what I mean? Um, speaking to you know teenagers and kids and stuff specifically, uh, even right now, you're more than I am. Even right now, you have all the time in the world. You have more time than me. You'll probably live longer than me, and you currently have more time than me, just to be my age, to be whoever you want to be. You know, you you haven't even messed up in a lot of the ways that I have messed up in my own past. You know, there are a lot of things that I can't undo, even in terms of how I look or you know whatever there's there's many things that i wish i could change and you haven't even made a lot of those mistakes it's it's still completely up to you who you want to date how you want to look what you want to do for work um the friends you want to have where you want to live um what you want to do in your free time basically everything i'm not going to tell you oh be an astronaut you know what i mean like you can do anything no <laughs> you might not be a basketball star unless you're 610 but like if you're looking to be happy and like yourself there's a hundred thousand different ways of doing that and if you decide to do it if you decide to go after happiness and a better life it's very very easy you just have to know what it is and fortunately for a lot of people that are unhappy they're unhappy because they don't have a lot of the things that they wish they had and those things are usually very easy to get it's a girlfriend it's a car it's a job it's a better friend you know a lot of people just wish they had friends you know what I mean they just literally I get kids to talk to me and I have no friends I'm depressed you know I want to kill myself I have no friends that's super easy to fix, you know what I mean? That's, that's real easy to fix. Um, girlfriends, jobs, cars, all that stuff, you know. You could take a month, completely transform all those things. You have friends, you have a girlfriend, you have a car, you know what you want to do with your life, you found your passion. Um, it's, you know, you might think it's the end of the world, you might think things are over. Um, they haven't even begun. Uh, until you know what you want to do with your life, until you know what makes you happy, until you know what you want, you haven't even started on the path to happiness. You haven't even started on the path to being the person that you want to be, that you'd be proud to be, and that's what life is all about. Life is all about working towards worthwhile goals and knowing what you want and achieving things and, you know, lifting other people up with you if you can who are, you know, in, the, in a similar situation to where you used to be. You know, and you'll probably find your greatest happiness ever once you have overcome some of these issues and are able to help other people. And more or less, the only thing that can keep you from happiness is yourself. If you decide you never will be happy, you'll make it the case. If you refuse to, you know, sit around long enough to really think of what you want. A lot of people, they don't even, they won't spend four hours sitting down, writing down what they want out of life. You know, what do you want to do with your life? Uh, a 10-story mansion. That's, no, that's not what you want to do with your life. That's where you want to live. You'd like a nice house. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not what life is. Life is, life is everything. You should plan out what you want in everything. You, your goals can change, but you should know. You know, know what you, know what you want out of life so you can work towards it. You know, in every way. In the way you want to be as a person, the way you want to treat your family, the way you want to treat your friends. You know, the, the kind of car you want to drive, the kind of friends you want to have. Everything. You know, that's, my advice is to formulate exactly what you want to be and, and work towards it because, you know, that's, that's what will, will make these people happy. That's what these people are missing. They're, they're largely not happy because, you know, they're, they're not doing what they want to do and they're not who they want to be and they're not getting closer to those things. And uh, if you do, 
you know, you'll, you'll achieve those dreams. You'll, you'll become happier. You'll see that life can be great. And as soon as you realize that, the whole world opens up to you. And even if you're not where you want to be, you get the satisfaction of working towards it. And that's what life is. Because as you know, you've got a, a huge level of success, but what's the best part of it? More. Working towards it, having gained it. You know what I mean? It's not just being there. Sitting, sitting here right now, is, it's cool, you know what I mean? But I'm looking forward to more. You know, and, and that's what you kids need. You need to, to work towards more and to not be so negative uh, about your situation, but instead view everything as positively as humanly possible so that you can bring more positive shit to yourself. You sit around being negative, you'll always be negative. You'll only see negative shit. If you sit around being positive, you can be positive about everything. It's kind of hot right now. Oh, it's kind of hot. You know what I mean? No, it's not humid. It's fucking awesome in California. You know, there's two ways of doing this. Choose the right way. Be happy. Choose to be happy. Choose to work towards your dreams. Um, I, I wanted to, to be something and accomplish something and you know, I didn't just want to fade away and like disappear. I didn't, no one ever, you know, my parents loved me, you know what I mean? I, I had family and stuff that, that loved me very much, but I had no friends, I had no girlfriend, I didn't matter to anyone, you know, I, didn't, I never proved anyone wrong about me. I wanted to do something, I wanted to accomplish something and uh, that was going to be breaking a world record for my age group. When I failed to do it, I had to accomplish something else. By the time I had accomplished that something else, I had shit to live for. I dieted, I looked way better, the world opened up to me, everyone was nice to me all of a sudden, girls liked me all of a sudden. You know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of reality showed itself, and reality is that a lot of shit's possible, a lot of good shit's possible. Reality is not that everything's terrible. That's, that's the reality that, you know, some super rich corporation might like you to think so that you always stick with some job you hate, you know, or stick with some woman you hate, or, you know, stick with the same friends that you shouldn't be around. But the reality of the situation is, like, when you view the world for what it is, it's fucking amazing. Because there's so much opportunity, it's like ridiculous. No one actually stops you from moving forwards in life. You know what I mean? No one actually stops you. And once you see that, it's, it's pretty something. The, um, the 909 American deadlift record uh, meant more to me than I can really describe. Um, it meant everything to me. I, I could have... I could have never done anything else. I could have died right then. I could have, you know, it would have been, I would have been something. You know, I, that's what I wanted to be my entire life. I wanted to be something. I always wanted to be good at powerlifting. I always wanted to be strong. And to be the best at something that I cared about, just that lift, not the best powerlifter, obviously, best deadlifter in America at the time for whatever, um, <laughs> hook grip, belt, cheater. Um, it, it meant everything to me. Uh, I, I can't put it into words if I tried. Um, you know, it came down to that one lift. I didn't do an opener. I just, I did five plates with hook grip and then I used straps to warm up to make it so I didn't tear my hands. And it was, um, it came down to, I could get this right now and for the rest of my life, I could be proud to be who I am and feel accomplished or I could fail it and possibly never be the person I always wanted to be. And to, um, to get that lift was just, um, it was incredible. I, it was, it was absolutely incredible. I couldn't believe it. Uh, cloud nine for days. I, that night, um, I messaged like friends of mine who have seen it. I was like, did I, I, I did it, right? Like it happened, right? Like it was, it, it happened. You know what I mean? I remember my friends were like, yeah, like for sure. Like you did, no one can take it from you now. And I'm like, you sure? <laughs> like, are, are we sure about that? Like no one can take it from me? Like, okay. It's, it's just, it feels so incredibly surreal to be that person that I always set out to be. Um, I always, I always wanted to do it. 15 years old, I wanted to deadlift 900 pounds. I thought I would deadlift 900 pounds. I worked towards deadlifting 900 pounds. There was nothing to tell me that I could. I wasn't like super strong or anything. I didn't know enough to guarantee my success. You know what I mean? I wasn't like, uh, my dad's a powerlifting coach or like I super trainings down the street, you know, or anything like that. It was like, you know, I'm pretty strong. I, you know, I can work pretty hard. You know, I'm willing to. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. And it's still hard to believe. Every now and then I think about it and I'm just like, I'm like the luckiest person alive, you know what I mean, to have done that. Uh, hopefully something else in my life means that much to me because I'd love to experience that again. Uh, just incredible.
extremely, extremely overwhelmed. Um, just unbelievable, just absolutely unbelievable. I remember when I set the weight down, I looked around just to be like, right? You know what I mean? Because like, it's just, how could it be me? You know, how could it be me? Like, I know I worked hard. I know I did what it took to do it. You know, I, I put the effort out there. I, you know, I had the genetics for it. I had the willpower and the knowledge and stuff, but how could it possibly be me? Uh, you know, and there was, there was more to it than just going for the record because, you know, you can, you can just get hurt any day trying that kind of shit. If you miss it, then you might never do it again. You work your whole life, you could be, you could be the exact person you always wanted to be, or not at all, and it comes down to right then. One lift, one attempt. It's just, I mean, uh, I don't, I'm trying to compare it to something. It's like, uh, you always want to be a baseball player. You only go to one baseball game. You know what I mean? You catch the baseball. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it's like. But probably way more so because it meant so much more to me. Um, just going through my head, uh, it's so thankful for my girlfriend who uh, kind of pushed me to do the meet, kind of taught me about hook grip, kind of shared some training methods with me that her brother had used and was also a successful deadlifter, you know, nine, uh, nine something. Um, I forget exactly what it is. I, I only have my two pounds or some shit. Um, and, you know, without her, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I absolutely would not have tried to do it at that date um, without the support that she gave me in terms of helping me eat and drink and making me meals and bringing them to me and encouraging me to drink water when I feel ill and, you know, massaging my injured body parts and telling me I'm going to do well, you know, encouraging me, believing in me. Uh, I had so much, so much. So thankful for her, so feelings of you know being lucky, grateful. Um, it's totally overwhelming. Like life couldn't be better. You know, life couldn't. If I never did anything else, it would be enough. <laughs> yeah, I had um, I had one person in specific who I know won't watch this video, or maybe he will, or I don't know. I don't think he goes on YouTube very much. Uh, he did not want me to succeed. You know what I mean? And and uh, to succeed meant quite a bit. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, I, won't, I won't get any names or anything. <laughs> but it, it felt pretty good. I, I had one person who did not believe in me at all. And of course, I had a lot of people that were just like, ah, you know, you just lift in the gym and shit. That doesn't mean anything. And, you know, I, I kind of like agreed with them. Lifting in the gym, it's, it's fun. You know what I mean? But I'm not, I can't compare it to like, you know, if Eric Lillybridge pulls 880 after squatting 1,000 and then I do 881 with straps in the gym, completely fresh with my own bar and all that shit, I can't compare those two. You know, it, it makes sense. Um, but it, it felt really good. Mostly, I just got so sick and tired of people trying to say that the methods that I use don't work. I was like, oh, please, man, like, just, just fucking stop. Like, it's working. Oh, no, you're a genetic freak or something. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Well, like, let me have my girlfriend do it. Well, she's a genetic freak, too. I was like, okay, well, let me have, like, this stranger do it who's, you know, five foot tall, 90 pounds. Well, you know, he's on drugs. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed kind of sticking that to a few people. Um, it shut up, it shut up a lot of people that disagreed with a lot of the things that I do with my training. It shut up a lot of people that, uh, told me I'd never compete. If I did compete, I'd always suck or fail or whatever. Um, yeah, it, it all worked together to be a pretty awesome moment. <laughs> you know? I've thought about this before, and I've thought, you know, I'd, I'd tell him not to change a thing because I'm happy where, with where I'm at. But at the same time, I'd, I'd want to encourage him. You know what I mean? I want to be like, it's going to get better. But that might encourage him not to change a thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just wait around for something to happen. Um, if, I, if I could say anything to him, I'd, I'd, probably just, uh, I'd probably just let him see me with my current girlfriend. I'd probably just smile at him. That's, that's probably all he'd need to know. I probably wouldn't try and tell him anything. You know, um, I think he would understand. You know, just to see me now and see me happy and stuff, he'd know that things were good. And I think that would be enough. I had no friends, I had no girlfriend, I didn't matter to anyone. You know, I, didn't, I never proved anyone wrong about me. I wanted to do something, I wanted to accomplish something.
This is Mark Bell. We're at Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, and we're here with Baby Slayer, who has a public apology for a lifter that came in here yesterday by the name of Jesse Anderson. Yeah, man, I had no idea you were going up to like 880. <laughs> I wish I would have said more to you, man. I'm sorry. Um, I found out you live like four hours away, and I was like, damn it, like he's not going to be back today. I think I might have even have said, like, I'll be back tomorrow or some shit when I was leaving. Really, really impressive, man. He's 20? He yeah, just turned 21? He's like 21, yeah. You can squat like a thousand pounds, man. Just don't hurt yourself. Just don't hurt yourself. Poor Baby Slayer here was very sad in the car. He's like, oh man, it's not going to be there today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, though. Well, there you go, Jesse Anderson. There's your apology. Hope you accept it. Really impressive, man.